So today I'm going to talk to you about corporate social leadership and how business can be the catalyst for change. So, so I love this quote. When I think of what it could be, I visualize an organization of people committed to purpose, to a purpose, and the purpose is doing no harm. I see a company that has severed the umbilical cord to earth for its raw materials, taking raw materials that have already been extracted and using them over and over and over again, driving that process with renewable energy. Ray Anderson, former CEO of Interface Carpets. So we all know and we've, we hear about the many multitude of problems in the world today and we're inundated with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Things like that four, almost four billion trees are cut down every year on the planet. 180 billion of those pounds come from the United States that are used in paper products. And the, did you know that the corporation, a corporation, um, is actually doing something about it with just one small little tweak. UPS, just by switching over from paper labels to stamp labels, is saving 30 billion pounds, oh, oops, 30 billion pounds of paper each year. Now, we also know of other problems, like there are an estimated 200 million child laborers in the world today. And how many of you here drank a cup of coffee? Today, I drank a few. <laughs> in one day, one single day, over 2.25 billion cups of coffee are consumed. Starbucks last year was able to ethically source almost all of its coffee beans. Computers. In the Democratic Republic of Congo, over 5 million people have died since 1994 in a conflict fueled by resources, minerals that are used in our electronic gadgets every single day. Yet we throw out 200 million computers every single year. Dell computers last year recycled 30 million computers through their amazing program, which is trying to completely take e-waste out, out of the loop and out of the landfills. So who's to blame and what are we going to do about it? Well, there are two sort of diametrically opposed views of corporations. One, that it's the evil empire, and one, that it's there for social change through making a profit and doing good. And for those of you who know me in the room, uh, I've got a few friends here today, which is fantastic. You, you, if you're my friend, you know you get inundated with causes, because at my heart, I'm an activist or as some might say a slacktivist, because I'll send you a change.org ca campaign thing to sign on to, or an avaz.org. But at, the, at my heart, I'm an activist. And through the work that I've done, working with a corporation, working in a business, and traveling around the world, and seeing amazing everyday heroes making a difference, what I've come to believe fully and wholeheartedly that the best way we're going to actually have change on this planet is through the corporation. So our biggest potential. So many people today who have businesses, they, tr they look at jumping on the bandwagon of corporate responsibility. And there's many terms and many labels for corporate responsibility that are out there. Um, this is just one mishmash of them all. Things like triple bottom line, corporate citizenship, corporate social responsibility, sustainability. And with all these titles that are out there, I'd like us to take a, a, a rethink on this and let's just drop the titles and let's think about what the definition of corporate social responsibility really should be. Or at least agree on that. And really it's what you do how you do it, and 
when and what you say. But what is the biggest block to this? I would say that the, really the biggest block to making this happen in any corporation is leadership. Because they have so many, so many people putting pressure on them to only focus on one stakeholder, and that stakeholder is the corporate or is, is the shareholder. But the biggest opportunity is also leadership. So I'd like to look at a new definition for corporate social responsibility. And that new, new definition is not going, it's taking it from responsibility and bring it over to leadership, corporate social leadership. And what is corporate social leadership? Really what it's about is embedding and institutionalizing corporate citizenship in a way that's authentic in your organization. And the corporation in doing this will enable us to tackle the world's problems. And the reason a corporation is the perfect vehicle for tackling the world's problems is because of the scale. Look at Rio 2012. It ends today. That's the United Nations um, Summit on Sustainability. There are over 130 country governments represented. There's activists, there's charities, there's all sorts of people there talking about the problems in the world. But who really has the scale to make a difference? It's a corporation. So imagine for a minute. I'm going to talk about three sort of stories just to, to, to uh, show you what I'm talking about. So I have this friend, and his name is John Bajan. And John is a retired attorney. Uh, he would be a self-described, uh, you know, he actually just turned 70 this past year. And he's one of my mentors and really great friends. And John is passionate about making a difference. He has been the volunteer executive director of Partners in the Horn of Africa for the last 11 years. And about five years ago, he emailed me from Ethiopia and he said, Nicole, I'll read it right here, Nicole, I never thought in my retirement years I'd be fighting for women and girls' menstruation rights. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I read on and he said, here I was sitting in this village in northern Ethiopia, all these women around me, and I was asking them, you know, what are the problems in your community that we can help you address? And the women were passionate about it. They said, we have no means for our children, our girls, to continue school after they hit puberty. Because what's happening is they hit puberty and they're missing, on average, a week of school, a year. And we don't know how to deal with this. And John, knowing and looking around, there's no drugstore down the road, there's no place for those girls to go and get anything to help them through menstruation. And so he said, well, let's work together and find a solution that works for your community. And working with Ethiopian entrepreneurs and partnering with different NGOs on the ground in Ethiopia and the community leaders, along with the women and girls of the community, they came up with a solution. And the solution was reusable menstrual pads that are made by unemployed or underemployed women. It creates a business for those women. The girls now have something to handle their menstruation. And in just one year, they, will, they were able to uh, empower and enable over 5,000 girls to be able to continue attending school. Now, that's pretty incredible. It's an amazing impact to that community and to little girls like this friend of mine who lives in a small remote village of Gubaya, Ilya, who wants to be a doctor. And I just, I want to challenge you and, and have you imagine and think, what if a huge multinational corporation that produces feminine hygiene products were to partner with a project like this. And rather than selling something that has, as Jan said, would be wrapped in plastic, what about looking at sustainable solutions for that, that locale? 
and looking at it as a, as a business opportunity for that large multinational corporation to actually scale it up so that it wouldn't just be 5,000 girls going to school, it would be literally millions of school, school girls being empowered and enabled to attend school each and every year. Think of the change that could happen with that. With that. So I started with a quote from Ray Anderson, and Ray Anderson has been a huge inspiration to me. I've never met him, but I've read a lot of his books. I've seen a lot of video clips of him. And Ray Anderson in 1994, he was, getting, he was a CEO of Interface Carpets, the largest multinational carpet manufacturing company in the world. And he started to get questions from his, his team and, his, and his, his clients saying, what are you guys doing about the environmental impact of your product? And for those of you who don't know about the carpet industry, it's one of the most oil-sucking, dirty, chemical using industries there is on the planet. And as Ray Anderson said, he really didn't care. They were making a lot of money. He, was, he considered himself a staunch industrialist and capitalist. But these questions started to pop up. So he went um, and you know, said to his, his staff, he said, well, you guys, you know, figure this out. And they struck a committee. And they said, Ray, we want you to come and address our committee so that we can be inspired about where we're going to take this next, or where we're going to take this. And he said, it was, he was in a panic. What am I going to say? Because I really have nothing to say on this issue. I don't really care. And he read, at, at that exact moment, the book, The Ecology of Commerce, written by Ray Anderson, landed on his desk. And he picked it up looking for inspiration. And in that book, he heard E.O. Wilson's quote to describe extinction as the death of birth. And he said, that was like a spear that drove through my heart. And as I read on, he said, it drove further and further until I was completely transformed and had to take action. Now, how do you do that in a carpet company? Well, he. He had the leadership and the vision behind it that he was going to, to rally the troops and push the vision forward of climbing Mount Sustainability so that by 2020, they would not be taking natural resources from the earth. They would not be uh, using unsustainable sources of energy. And they called it Mount Sustainability and Mission Zero. Now, Great story and amazing because many people are skeptical, well, how can a corporation, maybe some corporations can do it, but others can't, like a carpet manufacturing company. But in, in preparing for this talk today, I decided I'm going to just reach out to the executive at Interface and see where they're at. And I reached out to some of the executive because I wanted to know, Ray Anderson passed away. Is his vision still moving that company forward towards reaching full sustainability and true sustainability. And I got back an email from his team, who were thrilled, by the way, that I'd be talking about his story today. And they said, we are steadfast with our commitment to sustainability. We miss Ray dearly. He prepared us well with invaluable lessons and dynamic leaders who are taking the company into uncharted territory and continuing to do well by doing good. So I come from the tribe of the penguin. And uh, Club Penguin, for those of you who don't know about the, the story, the amazing story of Club Penguin, it was started by three guys, uh, Lane Merrifield, Lance Preeb, and Dave Crisco. And at the heart of, of of their business that they started, the idea that Lance came up with, was to create this safe place in cyberspace for kids to play, a true and veritable sandbox in cyberspace, that kids could go and build a great global community that would um, you know, cut through all the crap that's on the internet, that would be there for, for really for kids and parents 
a place where they could go online and parents would know that they wouldn't be inundated with adult content. And they came together and uh, they really um, have led with the mission that we believe kids can change their world through connected play. And when we were purchased by Disney, uh, I was hired to handle the corporate citizenship, which was at the very heart of the, their company, because they had dedicated always a percentage of their net profit to helping others and helping children and families around the world. And what ended up happening is I was hired, and um, but prior to me being hired, they had empowered their team that was there, their production team, and the entire company to come up with an idea on how to actually engage kids around the world. And the idea that the team came up with was Coins for Change. And what Coins for Change is about, it's been going on for five years now, is we as a company put up a million dollars, and then the kids have to give up something that they've worked hard to attain in world to decide where that million dollars is going to be, going to be donated. And uh, by the way, this was before Obama's campaign uh, on change that, we, that our team coined, Coins for Change. But of course, after Mahatma Gandhi's famous quote of be the change, we can all see in the world. But what they ended up doing, our team, our amazing team, is that because of the leadership that Lance, Dave, and Lane showed for the value of incorporating a vision of great corporate citizenship right from the bottom up and the top to bottom of the company, they really gave them that, our team the forum for them to, to lead with their heart and to create something that does three things to this day. It inspires our audience to make a difference in the world. Over three million kids participate in a 10-day period every year in over 125 countries. It inspires and engages and empowers our entire team, our entire group of employees because they're all part of creating Coins for Change. And it directly impacts 250,000 kids around the world. So now we're with the mouse, and our tribes have joined, the Mickey Mouse tribe. And we're hardened and challenged. We're challenged because we're now in a big corporation. And the big corporation is, um, has many interests. But we're also, we're also in a great position where we can continue to work together in a multinational corporation to actually continue to make a bigger difference than we ever could as a smaller organization. So I want to leave with, with two things on, on just, you know, looking at corporations and deciding which corporations are actually serious about leading the way in corporate social responsibility, or what I'd like to call it as corporate social leadership. And those two things are what you need to do now when you consider. Each of you in this room either work for a corporation, have a fabulous idea for starting a business, or of course are buying products and services from a corporation on a day-to-day -day basis. So the two things I would challenge you with to decide whether that corporation is leading the way with their corporate citizenship rather than following are these two things. One, does that corporation have social and environmental, environmental responsibility targets that are written and publicized? And two, in addition to having those targets published, are they reporting on them? Are they reporting not just the great successes, but the good, the bad, and the ugly? And that, to me, are two strong indicators that the leadership of the company is driving the vision forward of being a great social and environmentally friendly company. So thank you. <laughs>